In this video, we will talk about exception handling in ASP.NET MVC. As you can see, we have a simple MVC project created with us, which contain a simple controller called exception demo controller and an action method called index. We have written a small code block inside this index action, uh, which will ultimately throw divide by zero exception. Okay. The main purpose of this code is demonstration of exception handling. Okay. In real time scenario, you are not going to write such kind of code. So let's execute this application and let's confirm that it's actually throwing exception. So let me put the URL exception demo slash index where this exception demo is our controller name and index is our action name. Press enter. So as you can see, exception is here. Press F5. Simple as you can see error screen is here. Uh, you can see the error message here and you can see source code here. But in real time scenario, we never expose such kind of error screen to end user. Instead of that, what we do is we create simple customized error screen error view and we'll expose those views to the end user. So let's see how can we do that. The first way and the simplest way is using try catch block. What we will do is we'll simply wrap our this code inside try catch block and in the catch block, we will say return error view. So let's do that. I'll say stop the application. Okay, let me take this code out first. Control X, try and sorry, try and in the catch block, I'll say exception E and I'll say return view called error. Done. And I'll simply put my earlier code inside try block. B now what will happen is when exception occurs here, it will go to this block and it will return a view called as error. Definitely the next step will be creating this error view. So right click this index action and say add view, put view name as error because we are trying to return a view called error. Say add this error view will get created inside exception demo folder, which is nothing but which is our controller folder. Let's put a simple message here. I'll say sorry for the error. Okay. Now let me go back to our controller. Let me put a breakpoint here. Let me press F5 again and uh, let me click on refresh here. Breakpoint is here. I'll press F10. I'll press F10. Now you'll see that when I press F10, I'll directly come here because exception will occur. Perfect. Now I'll press F5 and it will show us error view. Simple. But there is a problem. There is a there are two problem actually with this approach. The first problem is if you notice right now error.chtml is inside exception demo folder. Exception demo is nothing but our current controller. Now if you want to reuse the same error view for some other controller errors exception also, you will not be able to do that because this error view is limited to current controller. So what we will do, we will use shared folder. I will right click this views folder. I will say add new folder. We will name it as shared views which will be present, which which uh, exist inside the shared folder will be which is going to be shared across all the controllers. It's going to be a reusable view for all the controllers. Okay. So now let's execute this application and let's confirm that our error handling mechanism is still working. Let me press F5 once again and let me simply put refresh once again. So if it is working, it will still it will get an error view again, the same error view again. So as you can see, sorry for the error. So first problem solved. Now let's look at the second problem. Now the second problem is reusability, reusability of exception handling logic. Now let's say we have one more action method here. Let's say public action result here, uh, sorry, public action result index two. And let's say inside this index uh, two action method, I will write some logic, whatever database logic, business logic, whatever. And then I'll say return view. Now, definitely, definitely there is a possibility of getting some exception in this logic. So what we should do, we should write 
or we should implement our exception handling logic here so how to do that I'll again put try block here and I'll take this base bracket here and then I'll say catch uh, catch exception E and I'll again say return view and say error okay done now if you notice the notice this index code and index 2 code you can easily say that here we are simply violating an object oriented principle called dry dry means don't repeat yourself this principle says we should not repeat any code in our application we have written our exception handling logic once here so we should not write it here again rather we should reuse it and we are simply violating it here in short approach 1 is not the best solution so let's try approach 2 so let's remove this try catch and then let's come here and simply put a keyword called override and you will see there is a method available here called on exception now this is nothing but this is a function available inside controller base class which will get executed automatically whenever exception occurs inside any action method of a current controller if exception occurs here it will get execute if exception occurs here it will get executes now here we are if we, if you are using this then we are not violating dry what we can do is we can simply set the result property of this filter context object to the result which we want end user to get when exception occurs or in short it's an action result so what i believe is we should get view result so let me create object of view result and let me set the view name to error which is located inside our shared folder oh sorry error and let me put it here next what I can do is if I want I can log this exception anywhere because I have this exception object here which contain detail about current exception but right now I don't want to log that error and finally what I should do is I should say filter context dot exception handle equal to true now this is a compulsory line this line is an indication to ex execution engine that we have manually handled our exception so uh, default behavior is not required default behavior means where we will get that actual error screen with source code and error message okay so let's execute and let's confirm that it's actually working in the expected manner let me press F5 and let me click on refresh again so as you can see exception is here I'll press F5 and before that I'll put a breakpoint here I'll press F5 see notice we don't have any try catch block here okay and I'll press F5 we'll see that as soon as exception occurred the execution engine or the control is here and it will simply return error view to end user and we got sorry for the error so here we just simply followed the dry principle and we make sure that uh, there is no repetition of code so this this is our approach to but there is again some problem with approach to what is it here this exception handling logic is definitely reused between action methods but now this reusability is limited in this current controller if exception occurs inside some other exception uh, other controller for there we have to again write some manual code in order to handle exception this logic cannot be reused over there so that's where approach 3 comes to picture now approach 3 is more than technical it's a logical answer what we will do is we'll simply use one of the object oriented principle called sorry one of the object oriented feature called multi-level inheritance i'll stop this application and i'll create one class called base controller and I'll simply inherit it from controller class and then I'll simply take this code and I'll write it here and I'll simply make uh, our current controllers base class as base controller and now because of object oriented programming this method will automatically comes here so whenever exception occurs inside it 
it will get executed whenever exception occurs inside this it will get executed and every controller where we use this class as base controller will get this feature automatically that means now exception handling logic is reused between multiple controllers so this is the this is approach 3 and here we solve the problem of reusability again but the problem here is customization customization means let's say we have one controller called controller 1 which contain let's say 5 or 10 action methods and controller 2 which also contains let's say 5 or 10 action methods and now we want to handle exceptions in both the controllers and we want to make sure that exception handling uh, logic is reused so what we will do we will inherit both of those controllers from this base controller and we will get that feature automatically but the problem here is let's say for some of the action methods uh, in controller 1 or controller 2 we want to handle exceptions in some different way now this is a problem right because ultimately both of those classes both of those controllers will get exception handling logic from this base controller so that's where the approach 3 fails customization becomes very difficult when it comes to approach 3 or this multi-level inheritance uh, scenario multi-level level scenario solution solution for this problem is using exception filters or our approach 4 now exception filters are nothing but they are simply attributes which we enable first and then we apply those attributes either at action level or controller level or at global level and when we attach them at one of these level they will start doing some exception handling work automatically for example there is inbuilt exception filter available in ASP.NET MVC the name of that is handle error attribute if you attach that handle error attribute to an action method then whenever exception occurs inside that action method what happen is we will simply get error.chtml the name is important error.chtml okay error.chtml which is located inside either at the same controller folder or at shared folder now before we go and implement approach 4 first let's make our code like before where there is no exception handling logic and which will simply show the error screen when error occurs so let's press f5 i mean to say exception so let me press refresh here as you can see exception is there let's press f5 and you can see that error message is here and the uh, source code is here just like before now let's go and implement approach 4 so as i said before the first step will be enabling exception filters for that we'll go to this web config file in the root folder and here we will find simple system.web section inside it we will add this custom errors and set mode to on done this enables exception filters next we have to apply this uh, exception filter either at action level or at controller level or at global level for that let's go to our index action method and let's put a simple attribute that is handle error attribute we already discussed about this handle error attribute it's nothing but it's the exception filter available inside asp.net mvc framework what it will do it will simply return error.chtml whenever exception occurs inside this index action why index action because we have applied this handle error to index action if some exception occurs inside this index 2 we will not get error.chtml page rather we will get error page something like this something like this because we have not handled exceptions explicitly inside this index 2 now let's execute and let's confirm the same uh, okay before that what I'll do is I'll simply take this code I'll put it here also so that we will get exceptions when we try to execute index 2 also let's press f5 and let me execute index as you can see when i try to execute index we got exception i'll press f5 remember we have applied this handle error to index now i'll press f5 and you will see that we will get sorry for the error which is nothing but our customized error view now let me execute index 2 i'll press f5 as you can see index 2 we got exception but there is no handler attribute attached to this index 2 i'll press f5 and we got the normal error screen 
no customized error view so as you can see here we have more customization we can decide where we need exception handling and, and where we don't if you want you can simply attach this handler attribute at controller level also when you do that every action method will get this ability if exception occurs anywhere within in in the current controller you will get this error.chtml in response and in the same way if you want you can go and apply it at global level also when we apply it at global level that means it will be applicable for every controller and every exception method whenever exception occurs inside any action method inside any controller in response error view will be sent so in order to do that what we should do is we should go to global.asx and here we need to write a simple code that is global filters dot filters dot add new handle sorry new handle error attribute it will simply attach uh, exception filter to global level that means all action methods will be attached with this attribute now so this is approach 4 now again there is a issue with this approach 4 guys I know this uh, demo is a bit long but trust me once you have been once you done with this video you will be knowing each and everything about exception handling in ASP.NET MVC and you should you will be able to crack each and every interview uh, regards to at least uh, when questions are about exception handling so one more approach where we'll solve the problem of approach 4 so what is the problem of approach 4 now the problem with approach 4 is there is no logging that means there is no place where we can write some code and we log the exception so that developer can go and read that exception uh, later in the stage and do something about it there is no place for that and this is the problem with approach 4 and the solution will be again our object oriented programming multi-level inheritance so what we will do is we will simply create one more class public class my custom exception filter and I'll inherit it from handle error attribute and once you do that you will get a method to override that is on exception and now here you can do whatever you want if you want you can ask base to do the stuff that means it will simply return error.chtml or you can do everything by your own I'll say filter context dot result which is nothing but again the action result which need to be sent to the end user when exception occurs so I'll set it to view result I'll say view result v equal to new view result v dot view name is going to be error and I'll set this view result to this v and we need to say filter context dot exception handle true just like before and now what I can do is I can say filter context dot exception we have this exception object where exception detail will be there if I want I can log it in text file or wherever I want okay so this is the place where I can do that what you can do is you can simply say exception e equal to filter context dot exception exception and then create a file or something and you can simply say like this file dot dot create I can say simply create a path then include something inside it I'll not do that exception handling logic now exception logging logic now you can do any third party library or you can use file or you can use database whatever you want but this is how you can do it simple now what next next we need to up attach this my exception filter again either at control action level like this or at controller level like this or simply at global level like this and now we have that customization feature as well as we have logging feature so approach 5 is the ultimate where we will get almost everything is it end no there is one two more things we you, you should understand about uh, ASP.NET MVC exception handling now this is not a new approach okay a approach approach 5 this one the, the this last one approach 5 is the best one but there is two more things you should know about exception handling and trust me guys this is the last thing okay this is the last thing you should know now these two things are nothing but they are interview questions which you may face during interview 
Now the one question may be, uh, interview may, interviewer may ask something like this. Right now the error.chtml page which you have created is completely static. What if you want to display some dynamic data here? So if you are using approach 5 then it's very easy because the one code which is written is written by you so you can do whatever you want. You can pass data as view data, view bag or whatever. If you are using approach 1 where you will try catch, same you can do whatever you want. If you are using approach 2 where you will use the on exception method of controller base class, again you can do whatever you want. If you are using approach 3 where you will use base controller, at that time also you can do whatever you want. The only problem is when you are using approach 4 where you will use the handle error attribute explicitly. So in that case what you will do? That is a question. Now the answer for this question is very simple. What you should do is go to your error.chtml page and simply make your view a strongly typed view of type handle error info. Okay. Now when handle error, uh, in, uh, handle error attribute which is attached to your controller or action method or at global level executes and when it try to return error view what it will do is it will simply attach the current exef exception details inside this handle error info and pass it to view as model. So it will be automatically available here if you make your view a strongly typed view of type handle error info. What you need to do is simply say at the rate model dot action name or controller name these are the, these are nothing but these are the name of your this is the name of your action method and a controller method where exception occurred and this exception is nothing but the exception which occurred okay let's execute and let's test i'll press f5 and let me press refresh as you can see exception occurred i'll press f5 and you'll see that see in front of sorry for the error i got this message attempted to divide by zero and this is because of this line at the rate model exception at the rate model dot exception dot message now this was the first question now the second question an interviewer may ask is how to show different error messages uh, or we can say how to show different error views for different types of exceptions so now if you are using approach one where you will put try catch then it will be very easy what you can do is you can put one catch block for one kind of exception and uh, you can return the appropriate view. If you are using approach 2 where you will override on exception method of controller base class then also it will be easy because at that time what you can do is you have filter context dot exception you can check uh, you can check the exception type and accordingly you can make the decision. In approach 3 where you will create base controller it will be easy in approach fry where you will be uh, overriding the handler attribute it will be easy the only problem will be when you are using approach 4 where you will explicitly use handle error attributes so let's see how to uh, do when you when you use handle error attribute so let's go to our global.asx and here what i'll do is i'll simply say handle error attribute a1 is equal to new handle error attribute i'll say a dot exception type is equal to type of divide by zero exception and i'll say a1 dot view equal to d error that means whenever exception occurs and when it's a type of a1 we should get this d error view so i'll say simply a1 let's copy this code let's simply copy this code and let me create a copy of it uh, now I'll say it this is going to be a2 I'll say a2 and here I'll say when it is null reference exception return an error and when it is something else when it is not a handle uh, sorry when it is not divided by zero exception and not null reference exception in that case simply return or what you can do you know you can simply say just like before also add new handle error attribute that means if none of these above match then simply do the default one that is uh, return the error.chtml page now this is how you can do it in global.asx simply now again the question is how will you do it when you are applying this attribute at controller or action level again there it will be easy what you can do is if you check the handle error attribute and if you put this bracket you'll see that 
there you will find this uh, named parameter you can say exception type is equal to type of divided by zero exception comma view equal to I'll say uh, D error okay D error and you can attach it multiple times one attribute for one kind of exception I'll say now this is for null reference exception and I'll say this is going to be n so this is how you can do it when you are applying attributes at action level or global level hope you understood the complete video and hope you enjoyed it it's it was a bit long video if you have any questions about this video what you can do is you can mail to correspond at the rate thank you very much